So I've got all the drawer bases cut and I spread them out in the in the cabinets on uh, this side and the one on the right side, right where I want them. And I want to, I've got a lot of drawers, I think, uh, I, think I counted 26 or 28. And so I want to be able to uh, go back to the workbench and make all the sides and do the dados and assembly and not worry about getting them confused. So I'm numbering the cabinets. So um, the first one I labeled number one and because of the way I'm measuring, I started with the bottom one, got my measurement. I'm making the sides go from uh, up to the next drawer minus a half an inch. And so, and I'm also, uh, because the width and the depth are different, I want to make sure I put the dados, the side dados on the side and the front and back dados, which are different uh, on the front and back. So I don't want to, you know, be, uh, you know, at the saw doing the dados and, and, and get them turned around and do them wrong. So I'm making a mark on the two sides, so I know these are the sides. I'm making an a F mark just so that I know which is front. I'm labeling it, so this one is, is uh, the second drawer up, so I'm using al alphabetical. So this is cabinet two, and the second drawer up, so it's B, 2B, and the next one will be C, and the side's three and a half, so I have all the information I need on the bottom of each drawer base, so I can go and and uh, say all the ones that are three and a half, I can stack them all together, make all the three and a halves, make all the seven and five eighths, all the different sizes, stack them together, build them all up, and then when I come back, you know, I'll know by the labeling on the bottom which cabinet they go with. So I put front for there, and this is 2C, and it's 3.5. So again, all the information I need. going to make some very shallow dados probably around a sixteenth of an inch deep it doesn't really matter as long as they're consistent and I'm using a dado blade to do that and so this is going to be really a quick operation uh, I am I've set up so that the um, spacing from the sides of the drawers because the, the bottom goes into the dado so I need to have the sides in a bit so they're in a half an inch, so I just used a piece of half inch uh, stock to set the blade up so I have the distance from the edge of the cut to the fence at a half an inch to create uh, this particular dado that the side will go in. And then um, when I do the fronts and the backs, I'll have a different adjustment and I'll, I'll show you that then. But the, uh, what I wanted was to get a fairly tight dado, just, just uh, you know, you, you, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but you know, this is nice and snug, it's not over tight, but it fits well. Well, uh, plywood is in millimeters and it doesn't, uh, you know, match up with, uh, you know, U.S. Uh, imperial dimensions, a half an inch dado stack is, uh, you know, four eighth inch cutters. So, if I put the four cutters on, then I'm going to get a, a dado that's just a little bit wider than I want. So what I have is uh, in the dado stack, there's one cutter that's half width or sixteenth. So if I go with that one and take off an eighth, then I'm going to be too narrow. So I have these magnetic shims. I was able to stack the three cutters and actually four cutters, the, the um, two outside, the one inside, and then the, the uh, skinnier one inside, and then some of these, and that just spreads the blade apart a little bit more. And so I did a test cut, and it fits perfect. And now I can start cutting. So I will take all of the drawer sides, it doesn't matter how wide they are, how deep they are, 
uh, they all get the same cut on both sides so I can run, the, run these all through and, and get some production. I made quick work of all the side uh, dados, and now I need to do the front and the back. They're going to be flush with the front edge. And if I put the, the fence right next to the blade, you know, you can damage your blade. You've got metal against metal. Um, you don't want to cut your fence or, or tear up the teeth on your blade. So I just uh, clamped on a piece of three quarter. It doesn't really matter how thick it is, had that scrap. And I brought the, the fence, the wood part of the fence, up to right up to where it just touches the blade. And so then when I, when I make that pass, I'll, I, get, I get the cut, the uh, more of a rabbit on that edge, and I can just test fit it. And if I were using a blade and I didn't say have the shims on it, um, and it were a little too wide, I could actually run this wood fence over the blade a little bit and cut up into the wood fence so I, I, can, I can narrow it down. But because it's sized perfectly, I wanted to take it right to the edge. So I've got a nice fit, and uh, now I'm going to make the front and back cuts. And uh, when I was doing these, I had all these to go through, and I didn't want to think about sides and fronts. And so like I mentioned when I was doing the measurements, I, I, the, the bottom is up because the dados are, are going to be where the, the uh, drawer frame fits. And so I had all my uh, information on this side so I could see it. So when I was putting it through the table saw, I could quickly see these marks I made and I knew that I wanted the marks to be toward the fence. So if I would have you know, not had those, I might have been wondering, oh, am I this way or that way? So just a quick uh, mark. Once I got in the rhythm there, I was able to just push these through uh, quickly. I'll be able to do the same things now. I'm not worried about which drawers or whatever. When I get to making, you know, measuring for, this, for the, uh, the, the uh, frame of the drawer, then uh, I'll separate them to the different heights and, uh, and, and start working on that. Um, just a quick note about uh, tool safety, table saw safety in particular. Um, I don't, uh, on, on this channel, um, I'm focusing on uh, woodworking techniques and, and particularly woodworking efficiencies um, for both homeowners and uh, contractors. Um, I highly recommend that you take uh, a class or two and learn the ins and outs on um, tool safety, particularly table saws. Um, a lot of people think they're just a dumb machine with a spinning blade, but they're actually an intelligent machine and they are programmed to eat flesh and bone and they have no conscience. Um, that blade, I've seen it personally to happen to others, so I'm very careful. I like having the um, guard on as much as possible. A lot of the work I do, uh, it, it makes it more difficult. Um, I am very conscious of this blade, and particularly um, what I've seen happen, and the one thing that I would point out to think about when you're working with the table saw is when you're cutting uh, anything, a dado like this particularly, that you're hiding the blade. You forget the blade is there, you really do. You have to be conscious of not pushing your hand into the blade when you're when it's um, when you're going over and the blade is not in your sight if you're doing a rip and the blade is sticking up through it's in your mind you're seeing it and you can be very you know very conscious when it disappears um, like in a situation like this um, also if you use a crosscut jig the blade is out front here and you've got a fence and and the blade can come through the back. That's why you build a guard. I build a guard on the back of all of those because you, you're not thinking about the blade coming through. Well, cutting something like this where you're cutting shallow and not cutting through the wood, be very conscious of, of that blade. You know, it, it's, a, it's a monster and it'll jump up and bite you and it'll take fingers 
uh, and draw a lot of blood real quick. So um, anyway, just a, that's just a side note. Again, my thing isn't really here to teach how to use tools. Uh, particularly, I think it's, it's good to go to your local community college or see if there's a woodworker community that has classes um, because there's a lot to do with, with tool safety blades, whether they're on a miter saw or table saw or on a router. They're moving really fast, and if they come in contact with skin and bone, the skin and the bone are going to lose every time. All right, so now we're going to go through this whole pile that we just went through. Two more, you know, two more sides. We got all the drawer bases done and the next task will be to cut all the sides do a little bit more milling and then get ready for drawer assembly certainly the longest most tedious part of the task but well worth it for the future use if you like these videos please drop over to my youtube channel here and subscribe if you'd like to build yourself one of the benches that you see me using in these videos click right here on this link and it'll take you to my website once you're there, click on the Paul Comb store. Once there, choose the plan or package of plans you'd like. And within a few minutes, you'll receive an email. At the very bottom of that email, make sure you scroll to the bottom, you'll find a link and a password and you can download the plans immediately. And also, if you build yourself a bench, I'd really appreciate it if you email me some photos of your finished bench and of yourself. I used to ask for that when I sent these plans out manually, but now that it's all automated, I'm not asking anymore and the photos have stopped coming. I've got a Facebook page and a Pinterest page just for the Paul Combs workbench and, and it's neat to put all those photos up there and show the, the uh, these benches that have been built all around the world. Thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.